So we ask the question, what is the cause of poverty? Why people are poor? Are they stupid? Are they lazy? Are they because illiterate? They don't have the skill? These are all the explanations you'll see when you talk about why people are poor. But you look at the poor people, they don't fit into those descriptions. They're so smart, so hardworking, full of skills which they cannot use, but still poor. And I give the example of bonsai tree. I say, take the best seed of the tallest tree and put it in a flower pot and let it grow. And it grows, but it grows only this much. It looks exactly like the tree in the forest. Very tall, beautiful, large. But this is just a tiny replica. What's wrong with it? Is something wrong with the seed? No, we pick the best seed. Things that went wrong, we put in a place which is not enough for the seed. Just a flower pot. It needs the real soil. It didn't give the real soil. That's why it become like this. So I try to point out poor people are bonsai people. There is nothing wrong in their seed. Simply we created a screwed up system to deny all the facility, all the arrangements that needed to be done so that as a human being, you can unleash all the creative power he or she has. And I blame the system because there is nobody else to blame. You can see right away. Who says bank cannot lend money to all those 9,000 women in New York City? They are paying 99.3%. But would a bank lend money? No. Where would these people go? Even these people that we lend money, they don't qualify. Even if you have to be a little higher to go to the loan sharks, the payday lenders. Payday lenders, interest rate is 100%, 500%, 1,000%. It's a thriving business. In order to qualify for payday lenders, you have to have a payday. These women that we work, they don't have a payday. They don't work for anybody because they don't have any job. But then why banks don't do that after these demonstrations, not only in Bangladesh, now New York City, and it's demonstrated all over the world, every single country in the world, rich, poor, middle income, doesn't matter. You have the money, this thing operating. And it's very well established fact. So the banks, we are so proud of banks running the financial system and creating the financial crisis too and make people suffer, lose their jobs, factories closing down for no fault of their own. You see, somebody does something, suffering goes to somebody else. They get punished. What kind of system is that? I'm not, I didn't do it, but I have to suffer. I have to lose my job. My business has to go out of business. Well, somebody did something terrible, and it still goes around. I said, that's where we have to go and fix it. This system cannot just continue. Then I took a look, look at the system as a whole, not just an institution after an institution. You can see, if you take off those glasses, see the real world, how different it is. I blame the whole theory of economics the way it is created. Look at the business. Business means business to make money. There is no other business you can hear in your textbooks, in your literature, in your discussion. You have to make money. That's what the business is all about. Profit maximization is the mission of business. Who said that? Theoreticians said that. And we believe that because that's the only theory you got. As a result, the whole world believing in that, they're chasing money. So the world became money-centric, money-chasing world. Everybody's busy make, chasing money. Not only are we chasing money, it becomes a habit with us. This is the way our mind works. We cannot think of anything else. 
It becomes obsession with us. It becomes addiction with us. And we can't see anything else. We don't know why we're making money, but we keep on making money. Money making is a means, very clear. You don't have to argue with that. But whenever somebody says money making is an end, I get stunned. I don't understand what does it mean. How can money making be an end? What, what is the purpose of life? Money making is a purpose of life? No. It can be means to achieve the purpose of life. What is the purpose of life? And to begin with, what I mentioned, that I want to express myself by saying that whatever way you do it, I'm convinced human being is not a money-making robot. Human being is not created for just chasing money. Human being is much bigger than that. It's not a single dimensional being. It's a multi-dimensional being. What happened to the other dimensions? The theoreticians couldn't know, didn't know how to handle that. They kind of threw it out. They said, this is one we can handle. Let's do it this way. So we, we were happy we do it that way. I said, theoretician picked up the selfishness in us and built the whole theory of economics on top of that. What about the selflessness part of us? Every person is also built with selflessness. It's not a special group of people who are selfless and other groups are selfish. No, every human being is packed with selfishness and selflessness, equally strong. If we have used the selfishness to build a business, why don't we use the selflessness to build a business? Oh, that cannot be done. I said, it can be done. When I did Grameen Bank, which I explained how we did it, do it, then I saw a lot of other problems along the way. I started responding to those problems. Every time I see a problem, I kind of responded by creating a business to solve that problem. Along the way, I created many, many such bank companies. I have more than 50 companies in Bangladesh, each one aiming at a particular problem. And people say, you, you must be a very rich man. You have so many companies, some of them nationwide companies. I said, no, I am not, because I don't own a single share of any of, my, any of the company that I created. Why do you create a company if you're not making money out of those? I said, because that idea never entered my mind. I was so focused on solving problems, I had never had any idea to make any money out of that. Then I started thinking, why do they feel this is a strange? Then I realized it's strange because it is not part of the textbook. It's not part of the world of economics. So I said, uh-huh, that's where one thing was missing. They forgot to build this thing. business. Another kind of business, business to solve problems rather than make money. Then I started giving it a name, call it social business. It's a non-dividend company, exclusively focused in solving problems. And created many more. And now multinational big companies are coming to uh, set up companies with me, with the, multi, uh, the social business. So we have joint venture with Danone, 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 to produce yogurt, to solve the problem of malnutrition among the children of Bangladesh. We make it very cheap, because once you are in social business, suddenly you see cost structure can be very different. You could make very cheap, because many of the things you can just discard it because you are not trying to impress anybody to sell more stuff because it is essential part that you are dealing with. No fancy packaging, no fancy marketing, nothing. So make it very cheap so that even the poorest child can afford it. So this company is devoted to that part, to solve the problem of malnutrition among children. We have a joint venture with Veolia, water company, to bring clean, safe water in the villages of Bangladesh and sell it very cheap so that everybody can afford it. So it becomes a self-sustaining company. You can solve all these problems by designing philanthropic activity. Gives free yogurt, free water. What happens in that case, it's an excellent idea, of course, if you can give free. But the problem is, if you give free, you can do it once with the same money. Because money goes, money never comes back. But if you design a social business, money comes back. So you use the same money to do it over and over again, up to perpetuity. It never ends. 
So we can use this creative capacity today that we'll be talking about how to create social business. And social business can be very tiny one, very small one. That's the power. As small as you can get. How about creating a social business to employ or to take five welfare people, five welfare recipients out of welfare? Happily, they will be coming out because you created such a wonderful business. They enjoy working for this company. Only it's good enough for five people. It doesn't take a lot of money. But if you have done that, you've created a seed, a miracle seed. Now that you know how to take five people out of welfare, you can repeat this because each one is self-sustaining. As far as you can go, you can do it for millions, the way microcredit did. It works for one, and then you repeat it, and it gets to the millions and billions of people. So every problem can just start with a tiny little pit. All you're developing is a prototype. Once the prototype is done, you have solved the world's problem. And that's the creative power that, and technology that we need to use. I hope we'll look for creating social businesses so that the world will not have to be filled with all the problems that we have. We'll start solving problems, and we'll make all the impossibles in the world possible. Thank you very much.